think she brought him here? She's gonna get us all killed. What if she's working with the Hiss? Isn't it strange she showed up just when they did? So I guess there is some doubt about us among the ranks. Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Control. Last time we recovered our brother Dylan after long last, and it wasn't at all in the way we thought. He's been affected by the hiss, but he's apparently also been affected by this place, and t to some extent he seems to blame us. Blame us for not coming for him? Blame us for fighting back against what he sees as a good thing? He invited us to go see evidence that may sway us to his point of view, and while I still doubt that, I don't know. I can't help but feel like we've been lied to from multiple directions. But before we, before we go and deal with that, I have been kind of committed to trying to slow it down a little bit and explore things that I haven't seen before. And now seems like a good time to do that. In fact, it seems like a lot of new documents are appearing here, because I've been in this room before. Collective Unconscious. Collective Unconscious is defined as a form of the unconscious that is shared in all human minds. From this arises unconscious knowledge linking us through our ancestral heritage. See Junge Report. Through this collective unconscious, we unknowingly attribute a series of images and archetypes to all elements of our lives. These archetypes are never fixed, but shift and change in tandem with our species and culture. This internal belief in the power of images, shared by a massive population, is something in the creation of altered items and objects of power. It's just like that Urban Legends document earlier. It almost seems to treat this reality, this perception, as like a collective dream, where the more you expect something to happen, the more likely it actually will. The sheer amount of something exuded is attracted to the best representation of that image, imbuing a single object with massive amounts of some sort of power. Theoretically, places of power could likewise be formed by the simple power of sustained collective belief. So in a way, all legends are true. You know, this whole game really does feel very cinematic. In fact, I read one review that I think put it best, where it said that the combat feels like how movie combat looks. And I definitely agree with that. But if we were to view this cinematically, this is the part where the protagonist encounters some crazy revelation and just starts pouring through all the information at our disposal to try and figure out what the last key piece is. Pope's promotion. Dr. Darling has personally recommended Miss Pope for a promotion based on her work ethic and assistance in advancing many ongoing research matters. According to her colleagues, Pope has displayed a keen eye for detail and a quick grasp of paranatural concepts. She is professional and diligent, though some of her co-workers complain of social disinterest. The review committee approves this recommendation and promotes Miss Pope to the position of research specialist. Well, she deserves it. Now. I've kind of been avoiding the trench documents, simply on the basis that they are kind of long and stop the game dead, however, given everything Dylan just told us, I think we should watch the one on the hiss. The hiss spread slash is searching for transmissions or speakers to corrupt chaos. The astral plane is a conflux slash switchboard. The hiss will come for us all. You must stop slash shut them up. Okay, that wasn't nearly as much of a that, that wasn't nearly as much of a thing as I thought. I think this room was locked by yeah, level one clearance, but I never actually came back here. There's so many doors that I still need to open. In fact, I just remembered there was a level four clearance down in the mold area. Objects of power and their power utility. Objects of power are unique in their capacity to grant certain individuals paranatural abilities. We call these individuals power utilitarians. The potency of these abilities depends on the power utilitarian. Using something, object of power as an example, some power utilitarians can throw a distance of something, while others are capable of much less. 
What exactly determines an individual's paranatural competence is unknown, but it's largely believed that some something exists within the body, and that, like all muscles, it can be exercised. So this is something that can be learned, and I guess the more exposure, the more experience with these elements, the more powerful you're able to become. To continue my analysis, I have officially requested access to the Northmore records, considering he's one of the most accomplished parautilitarians the, bu the Bureau has ever seen. Dr. Darling is still considering the request. A lot of secrecy even within this agency. I'm actually looking at our active missions, and first of all it seems like we have to go back to the Panopticon and finish speaking with Langston to finish the Fridge quest. And also this one's saying put a record on, ask a reach about the jukebox token. What about the jukebox token? Welcome back. Yeah, hey. I found this token. Any idea what it does? Ah, that is a jukebox token. Little bastards turn up in the weirdest places, like bad pennies. The rangers use them to activate an old object of power. A jukebox, I assume. Does it have any good songs? Nope, just the one record. Hey, be careful turning it on, though. When it's playing, you get a free trip to the formation. The formation? That sounds ominous. Why does it send you there? Well, the Bureau has been wondering that for years. I mean, it's just a pile of rocks built by God knows who, but... Well, researchers have confirmed it's in the same threshold as the quarry. Well, no one's ever been able to map a physical route to the formation for maintenance. So it's in the quarry? You just don't know where? Pretty much. We only send in annual expeditions to the formation now. Checkups, Salvador calls them. This year's team went in the day the hiss arrived. Come to think of it, the song should have run back hours ago. I can go in and take a look. I'd appreciate that. The jukebox is kept just past the security booth over there. Just put in the token and enjoy the ride. Okay then. And we have a whole bunch of things we can ask you about. There was an unknown area that I couldn't reach in the quarry. That place is really dangerous now since those astral beings showed up, but could be worth a trip. And look, perhaps it seems like I'm meandering a bit here, but all these delays, they could be justified. I'm sure Jessie is scared of what she'll find when she goes to investigate Dylan's claims. What's the deal with Blackrock? Oh, fuck. Don't get me started on Blackrock. You know, ever since research found out that it blocks paranatural stuff, they have just been parading dangerous materials in and out of the fucking quarry. <sighs> fucking lab coats, man. Look, making my job harder. Sounds like there's some tension between departments. Still, at least the quarry's got a good view of the night sky. Yummy you know, and Salvador used to have after work beers down there. What do you know about Dr. Darling? Uh, I, about as much as anybody, I guess. Head of research, loves to hear himself talk. All of those science types absolutely do. Uh, he's been acting a little bit psycho recently. Although HR told me not to use that word, so... Everyone thinks finding Darling will lead us to the answers. But if he's completely lost it, then what help could he be? Or maybe he's more sane than everybody else? I don't know, wishful thinking? You're security, right? Do you work with rangers? Not often. Rangers are specially trained in threshold reconnaissance and ground zero AWE response. Security is more interested in the dangers inside the Bureau. They must see some weird stuff out there. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, every week they are tackling things that were previously unknown to the human experience. Most rangers, they retire due to cognitive collapse. I looked up the medical definition. Not fun. Care to share? I mean, maybe it's self-explanatory, but what if it isn't? How does the Bureau handle threshold? Handle might be a bit of an optimistic way to put it. Um, Marshall sends her rangers in to map them, check growth rates, locate epicenters, take samples, measure stuff, basically. Sounds like he's done his homework. Now, down in maintenance, thresholds are used just like any other tool. Lab coats mine black rock from one, maintenance siphons water from another. We use it for pretty much everything, except drinking. Why don't you drink it? Do I even want to know? Uh, yeah, a lot of time we find these little chunks in it. It's uh, I didn't want to know. Perhaps having to do with the clog? 
What do you think of Marshall? Marshall? <laughs> Marshall's a fucking badass. Rangers could not ask for a better leader. She's a little, uh, you know, intense, but given the stuff she's seen, I'm not surprised. She does have a bad habit of disappearing, though. Where does she go? Uh, last time she vanished, I did some digging into the security logs. I found camera footage of her entering the quarry. She was down there alone for days. Now, typically, that's not allowed, but Marshall is kind of above the rules. I wonder what she finds so interesting in the quarry. Imagine being able to be above the rules in a place like this. The stuff you could see and learn. Don't get sloppy out there. I mean, look, you might think that I'm spending a lot of time on, like, documents and research. I'm hoping that the audience for this series will be the type to appreciate that sort of thing. And if you're still here in part six, you probably are. But I just find it so cool how there is just such a wealth of information for the curious here. Good luck out there. Have I seen this before? This is Lynn Salvador, head of Bureau Security. I'm making a formal security order due to the incident in April. Case number 21HQ593. Improper use of the jukebox altered item led to two fatalities. We believe a pair of agents used the jukebox to travel to the quarry threshold and engage in inappropriate workplace behavior. Oh my. The expedition team found them decomposing at the formation's base a week later. At least we found out the jukebox doesn't bring corpses back when the song ends. I'm having the jukebox placed in a secure location in the executive sector. It should never have been accessible to low clearance staff in the first place. The new location security and proximity to a high traffic area will prevent misuse while still allowing for expedition teams to access it when required. See me for any further details. You know, it's so interesting that coins, tokens to use it, just kind of appear all over. Back here in the old archives. Oh, there is a document here. America Overnight Results. Huh, is this one of your things? I think we might have seen that earlier. The America Overnight program has operated successfully for over something years originally designed to assist in providing disinformation to the naturally skeptical population of America, it has additionally led to the discovery of numerous AWEs and their altered materials by allowing civilians to call in and report their experiences with the paranatural. In fact, America Overnight alerted the Bureau of something and something in its first year of operation alone. In this report, the investigation sector have cataloged and categorized each episode of America Overnight that have resulted in a successful Bureau investigation in order to help AWE occurrence analysis. Uh, the more something results of Night Springs have also been cataloged in a separate report. Uh, so what about Night Springs? Was it uh, better or worse at the job? But that is so cool! The whole thing is a psyop! Any documents lying around, or will we need to, uh, will we need to see for ourselves? Guess we'll see for ourselves. Oh, wait, we can find more of them. Undertake expeditions in Quarry Site Beta to earn unique mods. Completing each of the four objectives will dismantle the formation to reveal the rewards waiting inside. Okay, we have a side mission. Ooh, and expedition gear. Are we limited by the length of the song? Oh, this is so cool. This game is so cool. This game actually, it, like, it's not just SCP dressing. It allows you to really engage with and just revel in the learning. Formation. Player energy recovery minus 50%. We're being sapped here. Okay, uh... And we've got Stargate's Causal Link active. Oh, investigate and clear the four island sites. We have 25 minutes. Which we can do now that we've got the Levitate ability. Uh, they really do make you feel like you're, well, an astronaut. Like you're exploring someplace people just weren't meant to be. Yep. And you boop. 
Cleanse the three broadcast plates. Uh, the hiss are here. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't die. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ow, ow, ow. Took some hits already. No, you don't. I love hitting you with my cover. It's acting as a shield at the same time. Oh, God. But our, our energy is not good. No, you don't. Don't come to the formation without a shield. It's dangerous, don't you know? Oh god, there are not a lot of places to run. But as long as we keep our bursts controlled, we should be alright. Now, at the time of this recording, it, uh, the, the first episodes have started to release for the series. So I have had time to read some of your advice, and I I've been going for headshots the entire time. You did say to go more for, like, uh, like body shots, that the headshot benefit isn't really worth it. So I'm going to start experimenting more with that. Shorter bursts to the torso. Hello? <laughs> Imagine if we find the executive bathroom here. That would be hilarious. Okay, a thing is happening. Oh no. <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic on your part. Oh no. Come on. Come on now. Oh, I should be I should possess you. Come on. No. No. is stressful to say the least, but I don't know. Do I need to wait for these lights to reach the top? Am I supposed to... I don't know if I can leave. That's the thing. Whoa! Oh, I thought I had picked it up, but I guess not. Oh, I get it. No, it says cleanse the three broadcast plates, so I gotta go to all of them. Alright, well that cost me some time. Oh, it doesn't cost me all the time. No, you do not... Okay. Part A, cleansing progress. Uh... Alright, and the bar fills while I stand here. Alright, I, I just didn't see that last time because of the attack from hostile actors. Oh, this levitate ability is so good. Saves so much time. Just don't send a juggernaut at me. Yep! I managed to dodge that rocket. That's kind of uh, it's kind of unprecedented. I've done it only by accident before. There's simply not enough psi. Yep. I need so much more in the way. Oh god, they're just everywhere. Nope, 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 nope. Oh my god, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Goodbye. But there is a juggernaut active, so that's a huge problem for me. So much fire. So much fire from so many angles. Okay, so this one's done now, I think. Oh, but I still, I only have the 18 minutes. I don't think we're gonna be able to finish this. That is so annoying. All right, you now. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish four of these in time. I just don't think it's gonna happen. That was pretty difficult, that last one. Retrieve lost specimen data. Okay, so maybe some of these will be quicker. All right, where are we going? Skeletons. Beings from this threshold? Uh, okay, where do I go to do that? Did I... Oh, now we gotta eliminate the waves of piss. Okie dokie. Man, we had a lot of people down here. You can't sneak up on me! You might. Whoa! Ah, oh, I cannot... Ah, oh, getting immediately annihilated. I can't see a thing. Okay, clearing out these waves is actually a lot more difficult when you can't rely on the, uh, on the telekinesis. Yep! I'm just getting annihilated. Okay, what we are gonna do is grab a rock and levitate up and smash. God, this is so cool. 
game is so cool, you guys. Yeah, and smack and die. Is that everyone? I guess it's not. Come on. I actually would kind of like to try taking one of these uh, suicide bombers by seas. I think that would be kind of funny. Yep. Where have I gone? I'll never know. Ow! Okay. Ow! I'm dead. Instantly. Just instantly dead. Okay, we come back to here with one objective accomplished. But, uh, uh, but we don't get our time back. Like, you clearly need to be really, really aggressive, but aggression gets you killed. And you, you're limited in the fact that you have no energy. So you can't use your most powerful weapon a lot of the time. There we are. Bang. Alright, let's see. Can we take one of- What happens if we capture one of you? Oh no, you still come after us while you're- Okay, there we go. Now we've got you. That's kind of funny. But you're just kind of following me around instead of actually doing anything useful. Nope, we need you broken. We need you broken forever. There's got to be some kind of better weakness for you guys. And it, it, it'll pick up everything except the grenades. But also we have different... We, wait, we have different effects on us. Player shatter damage minus 75%. So, like, your abilities are nerfed, you have to do it all within a time limit, and it's just such a battle of attrition where you have to slog through and try and deal more damage than you can deal. Yeah, that's... I, I am not spending time on that. I, I just hate, like I said, how hostile this game is to trying things again. Like, anything, anything you gain is taken away from you upon failure, and anything that's been attrited from you just kind of remains. All right, what do you want? How'd it go? Where's Philip? Philip's gone. Something happened before I could get him out. <sighs> Poor Philip. He never did like fridge duty. But if you're here, then who's watching the fridge? The fridge is fine now. I took care of it. You don't just take care of altered items. What did you do? I touched it, and wound up in the astral plane. This... thing was in there. It was huge, had one big eye. Wasn't friendly. We've been getting reports from the astronauts lately about something fitting that description. The astral plane is usually connected to our world through objects of power, not altered items. If this thing is linking itself to altered items, then it's clearly powerful. This may happen again. Do you think that thing is what got Philip? Must have been. The Panopticon is a dangerous place. The agents all know the risks. But since you're some sort of altered item whisperer, I've got a list of others for you to corral. Great. The hiss are causing containment breaches left, right, and center. Here, start with these. I'll see if there are any others missing while you're gone. My life just got a whole lot easier. Kind of interesting that there's an open world sort of mission structure within one building. Langston's Runaways. We'll see you later, Langston. All right, hey, so then what have we got? Uh, cleanse and contain the Japanese paper lantern, the traffic light, the hand share, and the moving letters. Are all of these here? Actually, it's within a whole lot of other stuff. But look, now that we have the ability to levitate, maybe we can get over there and see what's going on. Well, that was satisfying. There we go, on to level two. Yep. And maybe we can use that to get down there. I don't know if that door will open. Uh, but this is some place we haven't been before. Or at least I think so. Is that supposed to be an aluminum Christmas tree? Wow, something completely broke this seal. A globe. Archives. 
archives. This is going to be exciting, I think. This is another airlock situation. You're going to be angry. But you're, but you're just, like, right up there with the rest of them. Sorry. Does that mean that, uh... Does that mean that that's what becomes of the ones who are left levitating? Alright, now, as usual, I've got to search all these side offices for documents. Anything that can help me up. Oh, and more of those astral beasts just kind of loose around. And I had a hard enough time wrangling the one in containment. How are they going to deal with all these? Uh... We do have level 6 clearance. I had forgotten about that. Please don't be a memetic hazard. The exact process of how an altered item is born eludes us. We find them in the aftermath of altered world events. They take the form of everyday objects, ever present in our lives, constantly evoked in the thoughts of millions of people, now infused with unpredictable energies. They're altered. The superstitious would call them cursed. Now, are altered items sentient? Good question. Not quite. They're often fixated, programmed almost to cause certain events to happen over and over again. While generally less potent than objects of power, they are not able to be controlled. Left unchecked, they, they can be highly dangerous. To study altered items, we contain them in Panoption. You know, the uncomfortable pauses in there, I don't know, they almost make it seem like you're making these videos under duress. Although, I do get the impression that you love your job. Some of them just seem a little bit forced, although eh, maybe you're just camera shy. Ah, oh, great, here they come. Now, that hiss resonance, that doesn't also... That doesn't also help my guy, does it? Nope. In fact, okay, no, this is not a place to be. Goodbye. Yeah, that astral beast doesn't actually seem to be doing anything to the hiss. Oh, no, they are fighting it. They will shoot at it, so they are not on the same side here. Yep. Well, that's alright. We can exploit this, then. That's probably why, despite their numbers, they haven't been rushing me. Only thing, yep. It doesn't seem to be doing damage to the resonance. Although, spin certainly does. Yep. Hey there, buddy. Goodbye. And good... But, oh, come on. I feel like it's missing a lot recently. And I don't quite know why. There we go. But <laughs> learning to use Levitate has certainly been a joy. A welcome addition to combat. You're mine. Oh, come on now. Death and death. Only bought you a few seconds. All right, there's a lot of new area to see, including one door that I believe needed clearance. But man, can you just imagine the wealth of information that must be in these lockers? And it kind of feels like even more special because we had to do all kinds of like levitating and acrobatics in order to get here. Uh, Panopticon Methods Proposal. In this proposal, I'd like to explore the matter of containment policy. When an altered item enters the oldest house, we thoroughly investigate any possible combination of actions or words or material that would prevent the item from applying its altered effect. However, I work with these entities every day, and I have good reason to believe that a less convoluted form of containment is possible. The items crave... something. If we initiated a series of something, praising the items, or perhaps incorporating their images into pieces of maybe artwork that could be visited through the Bureau, I believe the altered items would behave without resorting to something or something, which only lead to the items feeling mistreated. If we treat them like criminals, we can't be surprised when they try to escape. 
So maybe what you're saying is that they actually, like, crave attention. Which, you know, would actually sort of make sense if they are given their powers by attention. I mean, maybe, maybe they really do just act out in order to feed off of the energy we give them. Uh, hmm, offices back here. This is not a listenable document. Oh no, it's another of these. Advice for life. sure was something and you know what that was really interesting because look they opened their mouths as if they were saying something but nothing came out another time a character didn't seem to be speaking at all and yet we got subtitles kind of like our subtitles our intuitive understanding are part of it which uh, there's a radio not only playing music. Well, bringing some tunes to this place will at least give it some life. Uh, spin grouping is actually something we could probably use. Uh, so you guys can get too close even between floors. A baby carriage. And I don't imagine we can use any of these uh, side doors to have a look ourselves. And something which is being kept shuttered. All under constant lighting and surveillance. Wait. I didn't... I didn't have the throw ability? What? Okay. Uh, we can also launch enemies. I don't see the utility in launching enemies when their health is low, because I feel like you could probably just, like, you know, kill them. Ooh. We can... we can upgrade spin... I think we're going to take that, but we can also construct Pierce. Uh, maybe... I, I use Spin all the time, but maybe it would be better to try out a new weapon. Pierce is precise with a charged shot that penetrates armor and enemies at any range. Let's try it. Let's experiment with how that works. We can take better Spin grouping efficiency, and with Grip, uh, we can get... We have crazy increased headshot damage, and... And just 50% damage increase in general, why not? Part of me wants to get better launch energy cost. However, I'm thinking that if we go for much faster C speed, and given that we did just upgrade it a bit, maybe we could start mining that. Because when we're overwhelmed by enemies, a good thing to do, I think, would be to just have more stuff on side, right? I mean, it presents a good distraction. Uh, of course, not... 
Not if, oh come on, how low is low enough? How low is low enough? Why wouldn't it let me seize you? Let's grab you. There we go. Yeah, that is much faster and therefore more useful. Uh, yep, there we go, and die. I need you, I need you dead now before the thing heals you. Tell you what, let's replace the regular grip with Pierce. And we'll shuffle our mods around in a second, because like it makes no sense to keep the grip away with that. But if we... Yep. That's decent. There we go. Yeah, we can absolutely use those to assassinate Resonance. There we go, and a headshot will just... Yeah, I like this thing. This is just what I was using the grip for, but it's better. There we go. Capture you. There we are. Yeah, now, now we're doing X-Men. Probably pretty good against you folks as well, right? Boom. You're ours. There we go. Trust in me. There we are. Yep. So I definitely, definitely like this new loadout. We are very, very capable now. That, that thing would have been real useful a second ago when we were doing the expeditions. I don't know, maybe if we get significantly more powerful, we'll try it again. Polaris, you're leading me this way. And with a level 6 clearance, we can enter now. Uh... Oh, you can shoot through the thing. That's cool. Any documents? There is. Self-reflection. Oh, wait. We've got a new mission. Locate the mirror in synchronicity. Prime candidate program. Your method for testing para-utilitarians? A level four suicide bomber, that's probably not good. That helps, certainly. Yep. Goodbye. Wow, this thing is good. Like, unupgraded and everything. Oh, you're all level four. I thought you were gonna be some kind of, like, boss version. Yep. And even spin with this better grouping is, like, so much better now. Yep. Oh, come on. Oh, just die, is what I'm saying. Oh wow, melee actually does good things to your armor. Or I never would have wanted to try that. Yep. And yep. Yeah. The thing is, like, you can actually kind of deal with enemy spam a lot of the time. Okay, well, I can't deal with you. I, I hate the fact that Salvador is just a regular enemy type now. Yep. And you guys, you don't respond too much to being shot, more just to, uh, we're just having stuff thrown at you, so, yep. But I don't have time to do a, a good charge. Nope. I gotta find that resonance first before I do anything else. I see you. There you go. That's you down. Yep. Come on, nope, 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 nope. Go away, go away, go away. Ow. Ow! Oh, you're throwing stuff. Okay. This shoots through armor. That is how we deal with you guys. Because it penetrates right through armor and does massive damage, which is exactly what we need for so many of our problems in this game. Cool armor. Goodbye. This is definitely the missing link, I think. Okay, maybe that's... Can we break you now, or do we have to... Yeah, we have to find other stuff, or possibly... Kill everything. I just noticed this. I just noticed all this. I think we may be experiencing one of those shifty difterinos. Excuse me, sir. Can you help me navigate? Ooh, wait. There's a document. Underneath the cart full of uh, Numo things. <gasps> Bright Falls Supplement, AWE 35! 
Oh my god, it's an Alan Wake document! September 1st through September 14th, 2010. Oh my god, okay, uh... Alice Wake, Mr. Wake's wife, was found during the Bureau investigation. She was interviewed and evaluated. She showed signs of severe mental trauma in the form of something memory loss. It was concluded that she had been trapped on the threshold during its manifestation. Notable individuals still missing after the Bright Falls event are FBI agent Robert Nightingale and Dr. Emil Hartman, referred to The Creator's Dilemma, and the file Ari The Cauldron Lake Lodge. Bureau researchers believe this event was the result of a forceful perception of subjective reality stemming from Mr. Wake overlapping on our own. Wake has been flagged as a potential para-utilitarian. Imagine it's been like nine or ten years since Alan Wake with like radio silence, and then you play this game and find this. In 2011, a book by Clay Stewart titled The Alan Wake Files was published by Roundabout Press. Agents interviewed Clay Stewart and suspected minor para-utilitarian sensitivity. He was placed under indefinite surveillance. A monitoring situation was established at Cauldron Lake to alert the Bureau of any future activity. That is so cool. So imagine you did play this back in the day. That is so cool. So imagine you did play this when it came out, and then you'd be going into Alan Wake 2 knowing that the Bureau is aware and that they have to be involved somehow. That is so cool. I think as this goes on, I'm going to start talking more about Alan Wake 2 now that like the cat is officially out of the bag. It's just, I don't know, I don't want to make it so that you have to watch both series, but I feel like anybody watching this at this point probably already knows. A Victorian Mirror. She was admitted to a mental ward for emotional instability soon after relocating to Illinois with her family in 1914, although any information on who that is is redacted. The item only appears on record again in 2006 when the Bureau investigated a sudden rise in disappearances in somewhere Illinois. Agents found the item hanging in the local library. They contained it quickly, though the missing people of the town were never recovered. Supplementary Materials, August 18, 1915. We certify that the case of Mrs. Someone has shown her to be a lunatic under the reasons of hysteria, bad company, and imaginary female trouble. Yep, that's 1915. Her fixation with the family looking glass is noteworthy though not on common matter when considering the female disposition. Mrs. Carver is a fit subject for the lunatic asylum, and will remain in its confines until her affliction has passed. You know, I just thought of something. Something like this happens in such archives. Imagine being the intern who has to go through this and sort it all and put it back together. It's so... I mean, I know I keep talking about this, but the mundane nature of the problems that would be associated with such crazy work never fails to get a laugh out of me. Let's try through here, man. This place is so crazy. I honestly have no idea how I'm getting around here. Like, this seems like the architecture might have been a bit nuts even before all this went down. Yep. God, I love having this ability so, so much. Is this what Dylan wanted me to see? It oh, no. Matter. We need to find that projector. Accidentally wandered into the wrong place. Hang on, Dylan. I'm doing other stuff right now. What happens if I shoot you? Well, I can break you, but I suppose it's technically my property. Closed cases. And are we able to- we are able to open this door from the other side now. But closed cases, that sounds real... interesting. Oh, there's some documents hidden back here, too. Maybe it's Polaris that shows me, like, that white circle when I'm near. <gasps> Bright Falls Summary, another one! An unconfirmed threshold manifestation at Cauldron Lake, Washington resulted in a fictional story written by the author Alan Wake creating an AWE in which reality was altered to match that of the story, though only locally and for a limited time. Mr. Kirkland, head of investigations, was alerted on September 13, 2010 by ex-bureau agent Frank Breaker that an AWE event was taking place in Bright Falls, refer to events investigated in 1970, 76, and 78. 
Breaker had received a call from Barry Wheeler, Alan Wake's literary agent, on behalf of Breaker's daughter, Sarah, who is the current sheriff of Bright Falls. This is so cool! A, a bureau field team arrived at the site two days later, only to confirm that the event was over. Interviews were conducted, referred to the 1970-something Thomas Zane, 1976 and 78 Odin Anderson and Tor Anderson. Alan Wake was believed to something instigator. Eyewitness reports highlighted an old switch, possible object of power, that something missing. Wake was not found at the scene. Reports claim he dived into the lake, but no body was recovered in the search. See, this this to me is how you do a universe. Because so many things try to be a universe now, just for the sake of fan service, so that something can appear and the audience goes wild, but it's so shallow. With this, it feels like a greater world and allows things to be recontextualized. I had said when I played Alan Wake 2 that when the FBC shows up, it's so cool to hear what was once such like a personal and like mind-bending story be simply referred to as AWE-35. Here, it's just a footnote, but, like, because we played Alan Wake 1, like, if you were there, you gain an appreciation for how the dry text in these documents can never give you the full picture. Set, Meg. You again. Why don't you tell Uncle Mr. Bones what's wrong? I did bad on my clairvoyance test. You can't ace every test, Meg. You see, everyone has different brains. Some brains can talk to each other. We call this ESP. ESP? <laughs> Some brains can lift objects like a baseball. Talk about a fly ball, eh, Meg? <laughs> no interruptions! So who cares if you fail your clairvoyance test? Maybe your brain can throw baseballs, or talk to dead people, or make friends blind. Once we know what your brains can do, we'll know what job to give you. And if your brains are just right, you'll get to sit in the big chair. <laughs> Yeah, she's standing for me in my current internal struggle. 100%. But then, perhaps Polaris is <laughs> just angling to get us here and this is one more distraction? That's something I haven't stopped thinking about, the, the idea that Polaris isn't everything we think. I mean, if she's attached to us and we become the director, that's a lot of power, right? I don't know why I'm referring to it as she, but that's just kind of what I'm thinking. Where is this freaking mirror? Oh god, there's so much more to this whole place. I wish things had gone differently in ordinary for us. But wishing won't change things. 
finding the projector of will. Ordinary. There's so much coming together in this one case. A new object of power, something we have not seen before. I mean, coming from me, that's, that's saying something. I the boy, Dylan Faden. Prime candidate six. And the sister as well. By the once we catch up with her, but the, the boy. It's so much potential. We're talking Northmore level readings here. And, and I don't want to invoke his name. But it's completely different circumstances here. was an incident. Yes. We lost a valuable member of our team, yes. Excessive force. Dylan has so much. But he's, he, he's just a kid. Like, I'll take the blame. He, he, he needs some slack. I mean, boys will be boys. He's exceptional and under a lot of stress. Roberts got killed. It's an unfortunate accident, that's all. Marshall needs to realize this. We will make this work. We'll make this work. I'm starting to have doubts. Lots of documents here. Uh, I just keep accidentally stumbling into the main plot. P6 victim autopsy. Agent killed during something involving codename P6. Blunt force injuries of the head and neck. Extensive trauma of the abdominal region, lacerations and contusion of the upper and lower torso, fracture of the spinal cord between L1 and L2 vertebrae, avulsion fracture of the third through tenth ribs, left and right, blunt force injuries to the extremities, abrasions, lacerations, and contusions of the extremities, dislocation of the left and right elbow, dislocation of the left and right knee, in other words, completely twisted. After examination, it was determined that the cause of death was internal bleeding, that occurred when something was contorted through his... You don't really need more details. Dylan Faden transcript uh, for review by Dr. Darling. Subject was alone during this outburst. You again. I thought I told you to leave me alone. Why are you showing me this? I can't do anything. Can't you see where I am? Why don't you help me get out of here? You always show me things I can't do anything about. Stop showing me her. I don't care anymore. And I don't care about you. You both left me here to rot. I will dig out my own brains if it means getting rid of you. I don't want you here. Get the message. Subject repeated the phrase F off numerous times before being sedated. Now, clearly what we're being shown is that you're... You're having something speaking to you in your head, but... Is it Polaris? Like, I'm starting to see it more as a puppet master the more little hints that we get that maybe it's trying to build up a confrontation here. I'm just gonna assume that going through here will get us what we need because we can't explore anywhere until we go through here. Wait, whoa, wait, wait. There's an entire section for the ordinary AWE. I mean, I guess it makes sense if Dylan was so powerful that they saw, like, director potential in him. I guess they dedicated, like, an entire division to this. We've been stalked our entire lives. And yet we're the one that found them. Outfits candidate P7, was that intended for us? Jesse Faden, movements and tracking. Look, eastward movement, cause for concern. This is all recent. This is us moving across the country and finally arriving in New York City. Just in time for Halloween, right? 
all the times I felt paranoid. I was right. The Bureau could have given me the answers, but they just stood by and watched me. And chose not to grab me. So what were they waiting for? I mean, they clearly didn't want us to find them. We used to play there all the time. Me and Dylan. And other kids as well. We loved it. This time... I remember was... different. We found a way in. Deeper into it, like... It had... Shifted. We went inside and... That's where we found the slide projector. A dump is a place for lost things. Things that have been thrown away. Did you ever feel that way when you were growing up, Jesse? What? No. Yes, but that has nothing to do with- Was there a slide projector at your home when you were small? N no. <laughs> Those were before your time, I suppose. But your family did look at photos together, maybe. In one form or the other? Maybe. Hmm. When was this? Can you remember? At parties? Barbecues? How did it make you feel? Did your parents ever show pictures that embarrassed you? Was alcohol ever involved at these parties? Did your parents drink? Did that make you uncomfortable? No! That's just stupid! Come on! That has nothing to do this with- This is really nothing. hostile. The slide projector, let me ask you this. As a child, did you ever fantasize about worlds inside pictures? Inside a painting? You know, stepping into a painting, into a hidden world, escaping and finding adventure there, away from your parents. I don't... I... I don't think so. I don't remember. Maybe. I don't know. Our whole life has been a Truman Show. I mean, the fact that they even have this and that line of questioning, it was all meant to get me to give up whatever info I had. Now my picture hangs on the wall in the room that contains that document. Uh, here we are, yep. Here's how we unlock those doors. studied what happened in ordinary here. That's the place to start looking. Who's that down there? I think it's time for a bonkin'. Oh, but we're gonna have to do some other bonkin' first. Yep! I totally could have sniped you. I'm forgetting I have it. Actually, now would be a great time. You've got armor. Oh. Oh no, is it using more ammo now that it does more damage? There we go, yep. And let's seize you. Smack and smack it at. That was way too much damage to myself, even if it did feel cool. And so much more to read. Work chat, dead dog. I see your creepy teeth delivery and raise you a dead dog. Yeah, like a straight-up deceased dog. Had a collar on it and everything. It had been rotting in that box since they packed it up. Go ahead and imagine how that smelled. So don't go whining to me. I wish I got to watch a parade of human teeth. Yeah, I guess you guys receive all kinds of things here. A control room? Once again, roll credits. Uh, wait. Damage while aiming, plus 46%. That seems pretty good, but uh, that reminds me, I do have to test. Is damage while aiming not a good thing? No, it's still fine. Yeah, we can upgrade that from 28% to 46% damage boost. That is wild. It's certainly worth taking, but what do we see? Yep, total hiss corruption down there. Uh, which means I think we're in for a fight. The fact that it's not showing us 
the mirror in synchronicity. The fact that I don't see something by that name means we probably have to fight through all this. Oh god, just so much reading material. But this is it. This is us. This is all that we came for. Uh, Willow AWE shipping manifest. A hollow sphere made of stone-like material. Vitrified soil. Something pieces of various sizes and colors. Animal carcass, possibly canine. Yeah, we heard about that. Rusted metal bucket. Leather wallet. Aged shotgun cartridge. All materials to go to the investigation sector for further analysis. We keep hearing about the Willow AWE. Like, ever since we arrived. And the bad guys are afoot. How are we getting down there? Oh my god, yep! Okay, good thing there's stuff on the floor. You know, I was just thinking right before the doors opened that I should step back a bit. Let's see what's down there. Besides Dude, violence. I were both prime candidates. Experiments. Well, I mean, he's been here his entire life. I've been here for, like, a few hours and I'm already the director, so I think that kind of settles the sibling rivalry. Think fast. Oh, I had the wrong thing, but whatever. <laughs> I, I kind of like using the big guns on the small fries. Yep. Yep. You guys, quite disappointingly, do not behave the way I wish you would. Yep. Yep. Or will you? Hang on, wait, wait, wait. Can I watch you do this? Kaboom. That actually worked fairly well. You guys are powerful if we get the opportunity. We'll just never get to in a group. Right, folks, <laughs> that was a big hit. F, 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 F. And boom. Yeah, I, I really like how the nature of the gameplay actually, like, evolves and changes as we grow more powerful. Like, we're actually adapting our strategies. Let's capture this control point. Still keeping an eye out for bosses. They've instilled that fear in me. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was kind of hoping it would glitch and we'd get to maybe keep them. We're going back home. Of course we are. It started there, and it's... Never gone away. There's a whole rail line leading straight to here. And some more restricted access we can get. Oh no. Oh no, yep, nope, there's no... There's no going in there. We can't even get... Yeah, we can't even get close. It's not just the floor is lava. But maybe there will be something we can do with this later? Turntable. Access the ordinary AWE by rotating the turntable. Oh. And the mold is everywhere. Not what I wanted. Yep. Okay, let's uh, try our new weapon then. My charge is faster, by the way. There we go. Oh, another one. Let's try for a headshot then. Yep, that ends you right quick. God, it's like shooting skeet. Oh, these things are here. Yeah, there's got to be some way, but that's that'll be uh, that'll be a question for a little bit later, I think. Yep. At least there's none of those mold enemies around. The shooting ones are quite dangerous. Maybe we can levitate over to there. No, come on. Yep, come on, come on. Yeah, there we go. But we still can't get in. Come on, we're here. We made it. St 
Sterling AWE. <laughs> Seems like we have our own little version of the ocean view, one more technological than magical. Ordinary dump site. There's got to be a way to rotate these tracks. So there's hmm. Maybe there's a control panel nearby. Bridge operator, there we go. Here, come on, don't have time for you. Oop. There's a door back here. I feel like this game would be, like, done already if I didn't do all this exploration and reading, but, like, why wouldn't I? You're missing out on, like, 80% of the experience, I feel like. Work chat teeth. Guess you just had to inspect an inbound delivery of, like, a hundred teeny tiny little boxes. Me, that's who. And you know what was inside each one? A single tooth. Gross. Yeah, you guys really love your workplace rivalries. There we are. Let's turn these tables. This feels like it might take a while. Also, I wonder if... Yeah, I figured you'd be upset about that. But what's blocking you? Oh, I see. Maybe we can take care of that in this way? Yes, we can. Good timing on this ability. There we are. Oh, look at the saw teeth on the bottom of this thing. That is so cool that all come out like this. Alright, I'll get the other ones. Yep. Boom, and we're good. Will we maybe have to transport something to the dump site afterwards? And now the gate's open. Maybe I should be glad the doors to the other places didn't. Curiosity is the driving factor in this game, but it is also a killer of cats. I just saw something through the wall there. That image seems significant. And now it's trash. Okay, never mind. God, I can actually, like, feel how nerve-wracking this must be. I mean, going to the place where it all started. In a place on the opposite side of the country. Oh, yep, that's- I kind of figured you'd be joining us shortly! It's a one of use. Okay, the thing for you guys is to kill you quickly! I wasn't sure if there was maybe another one. But now our health is low, and we have no means of replenishing it in the moment. Imagine if we could get a personal mob that causes it to slowly replenish. That would solve a lot of my issues. Of course, anytime there's stuff under the stairs, you have to check under the stairs. Stairs in games like this are like waterfalls in adventure games. I hear more angry. Ooh. What is this? Some kind of aircraft? That is so cool looking. Seems like it's seen better days, but <laughs> what what does this have to do with us? Is that maybe something the Bureau uses to explore places, or maybe something they recovered? Maybe it has power all its own. Oh, here's another thing. Ooh, better launch efficiency, maybe we could use that. Alright, so that's two of you. Is there anything more we need? Ah, uh, three. Uh, okay, where's a third one? There's an elevator right there that we can use. Right there. 
and that made something happen. I guess it means we can use the elevator now. Were all three of those for this, or was it just that one there? I should be prepared. I should be prepared for surprises. You're not surprising, you're just annoying. Boom. Oh, you were just a lowly security guard. Never mind. But I can't really use my, uh, I can't really use my throw much here. Goodbye. God, I love this thing. Which, funnily enough, is kind of what I've said about every new power I've gained. I don't know if that got you, but at least it didn't get me. Oh, it's a you. All right, this is not an advantageous position, then. Oh, but we can get you so quickly and easily now. You guys were, like, impossible to deal with before. There we go. Yep, die, die, die. I don't know why some of you guys are named. But it's still satisfying to blow you up with a fire extinguisher. Airplane evaluation order. We're going to learn about that thing. The airplane in question has been brought in from a private airfield located in Cincinnati. It is suspected to be connected to the something AWE, and is being evaluated for altered status. The plane is currently being stored in the transit corridor in the containment sector brought through the New York subway tunnel, special access something something, and links to urban legends centered on ghost stations, abandoned tracks, and something. The plane's black box is currently being evaluated for something, and initial readings have been taken by a research team though no altered status has yet been affected. Yeah, I mean, depending on the subtlety, <laughs> there could be a certain nerve-wracking horror in simply determining if an object is cursed. I mean, it's the suspicion rather than the outright confirmation that is so much creepier. We're still all moving in that direction. Hey, bud. Uh, I was hoping we could be friends. You just didn't respond to me for a while. Hearing strangeness. You're listening to America Overnight, celebrating 29 years shining a light in the shadows. Thanks for staying with us. Here's our first call. What am I about to tell you? If they found out, I don't know what would happen. If who found out, brother? The men in the suits. They told me it was an industrial accident. But this is something else. Something nobody talks about. The ordinary. This certainly doesn't sound very ordinary, Colin. No, not ordinary. Ordinary. It's a town. And it wasn't an industrial accident. I mean, that's what they said. But that's bullshit. Whoa, well, please watch the language caller. It may be 2 a.m., but we're still a family show. I, I'm sorry. It's just my brother was hit. They said the town was destroyed, but it wasn't. I went there. The people are gone, but the town's there. It's still there. So the population of an entire town disappears, yet the town remains. Tell me, was the phrase, there is no salvation written anywhere? I'm... I'm not sure. The same thing happened in Brazil in 23, a village called Fort Verde. More than 600 people just up and left. The government said they were fleeing guerrilla forces, but we know the truth. A mass abduction, as predicted by my regular guest, Dr. Quincy Reagan. Abduction? You mean aliens? That's bullshit! I know they're lying! Now I warned you about the language, caller. I'm afraid we're gonna have to cut you off. And good timing, too. It's time for a short break. Hang in there. America Overnight will be right back. Knowing what we know now, it becomes clear that uh, they were trying to shut them up. Uh, wealth of information in this episode. Ordinary summary. An AWE occurred in the town of Ordinary caused by an object of power. Slide projector OOP-15. Discovered by local children at the dump outside of town. When a specific set of slides are used in the projector, the projected images open doorways to other dimensions. Multiple slides were used by the children, resulting in the disappearance of the town's adult population. August 30th, 2002, 
Dylan Faden, 10 years old, and Jesse Faden, 11 years old, were playing at the local dump when they found a discarded slide projector. A team led by director Trench and Dr. Darling arrived at the site. They were there on September 14th. The AWE had ended, but the team found the Faden children, who led them to the slide projector and the slides, which had been burned with the exception of one. Jesse escaped when agents attempted to detain the pair. In total, 17 surviving individuals were found in the town. All of them were brought in for questioning and tests. They kept Dylan. What happened to the others? There is a curious correlation with the yet unknowable forces intruding upon our world in the form of altered world events. These forces gravitate toward archetypal objects, a gun, a, a television, a supposedly haunted house. So clearly humanity affects this process. Our collective unconscious is a, a map of sorts. We hold the key, but we don't know how to use it. We create these archetypes through everyday life, popular culture, urban legends, but we are observing and influencing a complicated system in action. We can change the likelihood of something being a receptacle for these forces just by thinking about it. But we haven't found a method to control the outcome. And yet, there's something unique in us, in our dreams, in the conceptual reality with power with our minds. What's the cause and what's the effect? Are we the starting point or just a necessary evil in this? A byproduct, a reflection. A projection. We'll struggle to find the answers to these hard questions. Or do I try? Oops. Ordinary AWE Stage 4A. Town proper witness testimonies. Jesse and me followed the dung monkeys to the cave. There was a lot of them. Most of the kids from the town had joined up. It was really scary. Jesse grabbed the projector and we ran as fast as we could. They chased us. I fell and hurt my knee. Jesse tried to help me, but the dung monkeys were coming. They were just about to get us, but then Neil showed up. Neil looked like a dog, like a melted dog, but I knew it was him. Neil said a lot of times he didn't like being a boy because Tom just beat him up. I think he liked being a dog. Oh my god, the projector wouldn't turn off, so we changed the slide to the hand. I heard her immediately. She promised to help. So this is like what I was saying before about the Alan Wake documents. The, the such different way the people involved, especially children, experience these things compared to the tone of these reports. When we, when we stop looking at the horror story and pull back to the greater picture. Jesse said we should call her Polaris. It's because she was doing stars at school. Additional slide designation hand, SID 36, is verified and in bureau possession. Unconfirmed existence of paranatural entity, designation Dog Neil. So Neil never recovered. Oh, I was sitting in a box like a cat. There's something in there as well. And something here. Ah, oh, it's just everywhere. Ordinary AWE Stage 2, Sled Hill Cave. After what happened at school to Mrs. Chester, we started spying on Tom and saw where they took the projector. Tom and his troglodytes were using the Sled Hill Cave as their headquarters. That's where the projector was. They'd been using the temple slide. We called it that, but really it was a broken concrete thing, like a warehouse or a bomb shelter or something. Very dark. The... The not-mother lived there with her babies, children, I don't know. She was feeding Tom and the others her milk. They were changing into little monsters. We called them dung monkeys. Unconfirmed existence of additional slide, designation temple. Unconfirmed existence of paranatural entity, not-mother. The fact that we're just left to imagine what this looked like... And that's always been the whole- oh, I didn't realize I was using this. That's always been the whole appeal of SCP, hasn't it? The disconnect between 
just the fact that the paper can never reveal what really happened. Let's take this for ourselves. There we are. And here we go. We're learning so much, but so much of this Jesse already knew, right? Ordinary AWE Stage 1B, dump. The second slide we called the meadow, but it was really just an empty lot with a bunch of weeds. There was a shack and a phone line. It smelled like flowers there. It was powerful, intoxicating. We had crazy dreams there. It must have been because of the smell. I didn't like it. Didn't like losing control. In the dreams, everything was melting. And then, when we'd come out, everything had melted around the projector. Neil was really into it. We found out he'd been coming there more and more on his own. Then Tom beat the secret out of him and found the projector. He and his goons took it. There's real, like, there's real it vibes here where all this is the culmination of something that at the time was like whimsical and adventurous, but we just lacked the capability to understand the severity of it. We thought Neil had got lost inside the meadow when Tom changed the slide, but that's not what happened. Unconfirmed existence of additional slide, meadow. Let's see what they have. Home, our school, the woods, the dump. <sighs> they recreated the entire thing. Maybe trying to recreate the events or understand what led to them. I mean, I suppose in this line of work, they have to be able to account for any variable. I mean, we've been getting all the information as it was completed, but I, I keep forgetting that this information has to be hard, hard won. We could be a giant monster and destroy our town. Maybe we need it for something, but that's a real intrusive thought right now. Yep. Well, it looks like we're not going to have a choice. Let's go. Yep. Yep. Come on, let's take you. There we are. Oh, I love taking you guys for myself. You're a juggernaut. Oh, uh, I don't know why that happened. Oh, like it dropped the thing I was holding. All right, you. Yep. Let's go for a headshot. Oh. It actually, hmm, that's not doing as much as I would like to you. I think we still have to rely on grenades in dealing with juggernauts. Yep. You are very bullet resistant, after all. Yep. Nope, we want as many of these things as we can get. Those are, yeah, grenades are definitely the most effective against you. Your biggest enemy is yourself. Vice for life. Yep. And I'm just gonna get away from you and let my boys do the dirty work. There we go, a real cannon able. We found the slide projector in the dump outside town. Did they recreate that too? Is that where they keep it? Potentially. Hmm, well this would be that, right? Stage one. Stage two, wow, they've actually mapped out how this thing progresses. Like, I, I just love how much, like, thought is put into all of this. Like, it, it all feels like there's a world of investigation that took place. And even though we obviously can't be present for all of it, it doesn't just feel like it's presented only what we need to know in the moment. Or up here. You mentioned a poem last time we talked. By Thomas Zane? Oh my god. It's beyond the shadow you settle for, there's a miracle illuminated. Hmm. I looked the poem up. Only I couldn't find any poet by that name. I did find a European filmmaker who moved here in the 60s, named Thomas Zane. What? I don't... No matter. 
It suits you very well, the poem. How you see things. Maybe you wrote it yourself. I didn't. No matter. You've said a few times that you feel like there's a piece of you missing. Can we talk about that? Okay. Yeah, um, it's this. I feel an emptiness, a yearning for something that I think I lost. It's natural for you to feel that way. Your brother and your parents are dead. No, no, Dulin's not dead. And that's not even it. You're referring to the imaginary friend from your childhood? Polaris, she's come back. After a long time, she's calling me. In a dream I saw, she, she showed me things. Jesse, it felt more real than anything. As real as what happened in Ordinary. The industrial accident in your hometown? That you believe Polaris caused? No, it wasn't an accident. There was no industrial accident, and Polaris didn't cause it. She saved me and Dylan. Jesse. No, it was a cover-up. The government knows about it. There were agents there. Agents from... I don't know exactly. They took Dylan. They... I'll find them. I won't stop looking. Polaris wants me to go to New York. There's a building there. I have to leave soon. I have to be there at a very specific time. Something... Something hugely important is going to happen. Jesse, you know we can't let you go until you're well. And that begins by understanding what's real and what's imagined. Can't let you leave until you're well. So this wasn't voluntary. These were like mandatory. You may have even been institutionalized. And Polaris wasn't with you the entire time. You had to be here at a specific time. There is actually a world of context that's been added just now. Why are these offices so bare? It's like everything was packed up. That is really creating some uneasiness in me. Why is it like this? And what is all this? Ordinary dump. They moved the whole landfill here in the middle of New York and nobody saw a thing pretty unbelievable unbelievable is right this is nuts just when I think I've become desensitized and nothing will shock me a dump cessation of work order by order of Dr. Darling all work in the ordinary dump is to stop effective immediately Resources will be allocated to a different department. Details forthcoming. This area will be sealed at the end of the month. Please remove all personal effects before that time. Any photographic slides, the type used in slide projectors, should be delivered to Dr. Darling immediately. So does that mean that it's here somewhere? <laughs> Along with some other buddies. Yep. Come on, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There we go. Get you out of the way early. Come on, computer monitor. Come on, computer monitor. Come on, computer monitor. And strike. And spare. So many of yous. Alright, get you. Ow. Where are you at? There you go, come on. I need to get at that tough boy. You seem to be more or less stuck. Yep. No, you're actually not, uh, You kind of remind me of Nightingale, but that's a story for another game. Howdy. Boom. Oh wow, you've got tons of health for days. You're gonna be an issue. Oh no. 
There's just so much going on and not a lot of cover. <sighs> Ow! Yeah, I'm having a real difficulty watching all directions right now. Boom. Let's use more dodge roll. So things against you. I'm having to slow it down a bit because panicking is what's going to kill me here. Oh, great. And one of you is now up there. Smack. No. Smack. There we go. If we kill you, your things seem to disappear. At least that seems to be the case. Slide projector, I'm guessing, is in this car. Come on. Bang! That was a headshot. A very nice headshot at that. Oh no, come on. Come on. Smack. We should check that lab. We could, but there's a thing here. Album cover. Uh, oh, it's the odd god, uh, the old Gods of Asgard. I was nine or something when I found my dad's old Gods of Asgard album. I became a huge fan instantly. How crazy is this? We're all the way over here in an unfamiliar place on an unbelievable journey. And yet here's a place we probably remember quite well in its entirety, just sitting in the middle of this concrete chamber. I will never get over what an absolute trip this must be for her. Effective immediately. I'm setting up a new department. Dimensional research in the research sector. Uh, transferring the slide projector there. That's where my focus will be now. The ordinary site remains as is. We'll be back to... I, I don't know when. Darling took the projector to the research sector. He dedicated a whole area to it, so he knew it was important. Dimensional research. That's where we go next. What could possibly have happened that got this veteran scientist of the strange so shaken up? It's got to be much more than just like losing someone trying to research Dylan, right? I mean, he discovered something that, like, turned his hair white. And that's what he was being so, I guess, confrontational with Trench about. All this must be recent. But it'll have to wait until next time. Until then, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.